Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Sitting with me, Greg Cunningham, Raymond James Financial. Hey, Joe. Always happy to have you on the show. Good to see you. What an auspicious occasion to have you here. It is, and I see you're properly attired you for voting I, uh, day. And I know that later on, in the, probably about an hour or two, you're going to have a I Voted sticker on our You know, I? it's interesting. I was watching the lines. You were talking about earlier about the lines in Florida yeah. and so on. I do an absentee va ballot. My Did whole you? family does. And then that way you can sit in the comfort of your home and fill it out. And I think that's the way of future. I don't think email is. but Right. Uh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I think absentee ballots is the way you should go. It saves everybody a lot of money. You don't, you know, the the workers at the polls don't have to show up. You just, you know, absentee ballot. And do you, you mail yours in or do you take it in? I mail it in. Mail I mail it in. Okay. The whole family awesome. did it. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I'm yeah. glad you voted already. And yeah. hopefully, uh, you know, I'd love to see a turnout this year that just, you know, sets the standard for what we should be doing in America. You know, that I'd like to see it get up in that 70 percent range. That, that would be, be nice? tremendous. Yeah, and it, it's a shame really that that doesn't happen. Really should be more happen. 80 or 90, but. Yeah, it's a shame that that doesn't happen. People have uh, lost the fact that this is one of the privileges of being in the United States yeah. is the right to vote for the folks that we want to lead us. And I think we some of us have lost uh, that point. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with people feeling, feeling disenfranchised. But sure. you can't ever expect to be enfranchised if you don't do your part. That's right. And it's so important. And we're going to be talking about the physical cliff that's yes. becoming more and more a reality. And people, I don't think the general populace understand the impact of the cliff on them individually. And we should talk about that. Okay. And that was brought on by some of the people that we voted for and, and you know, the super committee that didn't do their job. Uh, uh, we're we're going to be facing the, the that cliff here in just a very short time. So let's talk about that in a second. I want to start off by kind of getting into the the fact that we are you know at the beginning of well the end and the beginning of cycles. Yeah. And this right. is an important part of of, of your financial right now, I guess it, is the way it, to put it. It is. Um, I, I subscribe to something called the Stock Traders Almanac. Okay. Kind of like the Farmer's Almanac. They, right. They study trends in the stock market. And there's one seasonality trend that seems to keep appearing. And uh, it was first talked about in the 1930s uh, in the Financial Times, which was an actual financial newspaper at that time. And they talked about uh, selling in May and going away in the stock market. And basically, interesting. yeah, it, it is really interesting. And it shows, and, and it's been back tested over the last 62 years. So if you put $10,000 in the market, say in 1950, uh, and um, you, you did that, and basically in um, right now, and uh, then sold in May, uh, you would have come out dramatically better uh, than if you invested uh, between May and October. So really? exactly. So sell in May, go away. So basically, what the, what they're saying is uh, that you shouldn't be in the stock market May from to May to October. But that's not the way you should do it. Right. But that is the trend. So if you'd invested ten thousand uh, dollars during the the good period, sure. Uh, in, in that sixty two years, you'd had six hundred eighty four thousand dollars. If you'd done it in the bad season seasonal time, uh, mm -hmm. then you would have lost money. Uh, really? Ten thousand had been about eighty six hundred dollars. Is so, this sort of a self fulfilling prophecy, though? Well, it could be. A lot of the, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people look at those trends, yeah. uh, and they, you know, that maybe they take their money out during that period of time. But that's why you need a financial planner to exactly. understand that. But that's one. Of, that seasonality is really important in the stock market. And of course, there's always money to be made somewhere in the stock market. So during the bad time. Uh, where you shouldn't be maybe fully invested in stocks. There are other things to invest in. Yeah. So seasonality is really important. Um, well, they say for everything there is a season. Exactly. So <laughs> sell in crazy. May uh, and walk away. That's basically the, uh, and it's still it's, it's true today. But again, you need to have a financial planner that studies those trends and, and knows how to use those trends to make you money. Well, the important thing is, regardless of whether you've been ascribing to this, to this point, we know that now we're in November, which means it's the time to do it again. Exactly. You should be in the market here. And even though it's an election year, because, you know, election year kind of squirrels things a little bit, uh, the adage still holds true that this is probably the best period of time, seas time seasonally to be in the stock market. Well, the, the good part, too, though, is, I mean, even though it is an election year, the election's over, you know, today, basically. Right. Right. And in a week or two weeks, Either something very exciting will happen with the stock exchange or it probably will likely just stay 
right where it is. Yeah, it it's could, not likely to go the other way, typically. Typically, in an election year, it usually goes up the last half right. of the year. And then, of course, you got a new regime coming in if you have a Romney ticket that wins. And uh, you have an old regime going, getting back to doing what they've been trying to do. So usually, election years are pretty good for the stock market historically. And that's right. another thing you can uh, look at the Stock Traders Almanac and figure out because they have all those facts and figures. Either way, really good time typically to kind of, we're coming to the end of the year, it's a good time to figure out what you're gonna do with your investments, what remaining, uh, you know, this is a big one, what remains to be done to maybe protect some of your money by, uh, you know, perhaps doing some some charitable things, which are yes, a great time right, of year to do right, them. Exactly. So we're getting to that time too, where you mm -hmm. wanna, you know, if you've still gotta kinda create a shelter for a little bit of money, this is a good time to do that. And you, got a, good, you got a good tax atmosphere right now too. Next year is not going to be a good tax uh, atmosphere. I'll say. Yeah, because the, we'll, we'll talk about that. That physical cliff, people don't realize basically your taxes are going to go up next year almost across the board. So uh, we need to be very cognizant of what's happening. And a lot of things should be done this year. You should take income this year, uh, make charitable, charitable deductions. Um, uh, those kinds of Make things. Make it if a big year. Right. If you're a business owner, buy property to improve your business this year, the Section 179 rules, because the deductions are not going to be as great next year. Let's talk about what makes up the fiscal cliff. Yeah. And, let, and then let's talk about one of the, some of those things you can do to yeah, prepare. Yeah, let me look at, there. I made some bullet points here. Yeah, so absolutely. let me take a look at these because there are so many of them. And this okay. is, what people just don't understand. First of all, all, uh, all the tax brackets are going to increase. Right. And the low tax bracket, the 10% bracket is going to go away completely. Okay. Your upper bracket is going to go from 35 to almost 40%, you know, go back to the way it was. And by the way, some of these tax cuts go all the way back to 2001. Yeah. So uh, people are used all to these. All the way these. back almost to Clinton. Exactly. Get pretty close uh, to them. People are used to them, so they're, all of a sudden they're not going to be there. Child care tax credit is going to be cut in half. Okay. Uh, estate tax. If you're inheriting an estate, the estate's going to be paying a lot of tax because we're going back to the one million exemption and the 55% top rate. So, you know, you're going to get 45% on a dollar, 45 cents on a dollar. The capital uh, gains tax yeah. is going back to 20%. And this is what kind of scares me, uh, keep, may keep people from investing because, you know, the capital gains rate's going to go up. Um, but, and, you know, if you don't invest, you don't make anything anyway. So you kind of got to do what yeah, you Yeah, but do. everybody needs to invest. Yeah. You know that. Everybody yeah. needs to invest. It doesn't make sense to not. That's right. Uh, dividends are going to be taxed at the ordinary income tax rate again, so your bracket's going up, so your uh, uh, ordinary dividends, dividends from uh, blue chip stocks, those kind of things are going to be right. taxed at a higher rate. I think that's going to uh, that's going to squash investing a little bit again. And a lot of uh, elderly people now are, are relying on dividends for their income. Yeah. So even their tax rates are going up and their taxes on uh, dividends are going up. So um, you have the elimination of tax benefits for education expenses, those kinds of things. So this is really important. And then you were talking about the military uh, yeah. earlier in your discussion. And because of the sequester, uh, you're going to have right. a cut in defense spending. Right. And uh, people don't realize that includes things like military housing, stuff like yeah. that. So uh, I'm from a military family, and I can tell you that military housing is not the best, and now they're going to cut even more. So people in the military, you know, maybe have to degrade their housing, those kinds of things because of these spending cuts. Um, and, and that's not half of it. I, I've got another... I know we have uh, not yeah, a whole lot of time, time. but hit a couple more big ones. Yeah, one of the big ones, I think, and this is what uh, people don't realize, there's a 27% reduction in payments to physicians for Medicare-related patients. 27% wow. cut. So they're going to take less money for doing the They're going to take stuff. less money, and, and what's worse, they may decide not to take Medicare patients. That's and there, there are physicians now that don't do that. So if you're going to not give them 20%, 27%, you're going to cut that payment to them, you know, what's what's their options? Hey, well, I'm not going to take any more Medicare patients. Wow. Yeah, so this is, this is scary stuff, and I don't is, think the general public uh, understands oh, it. Oh, I don't think they do either. Where can, if somebody wanted to know more about it, where did you get your info? Where can people get some of this? Well, they can call me. Get, call uh, you up? Call me, yeah, okay. and I've got all the sources for this. This is good. Um, 
And, uh, you know, there I'm getting stuff all the time. And one of my jobs is to take this information and filter it. Yeah. And then give it back to Aggregate my clients. Aggregate it as they and figure out it. what it means. Yeah, and then that way you don't have to know it. But if you don't have somebody doing this for you, it's almost a full-time job figuring out, figuring out what this is. Right. And, and is there any chance that any of these things may not happen? Yes, there is. There's a great chance. But there, like I say, the time is running out. I mean, right. these things start January 1 effectively. It's crazy. Right. As, little, yeah. as little work as our Congress has done, this year, yeah, especially in election year, happens. you know, we're not, they're not passing any, le yeah. any legislation over the last three or four months. Nobody's been working. Maybe they'll get I think back we've to had work four or five week. votes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. Uh, and it doesn't really matter which administration gets in. It depends on what Congress we have as to whether some of these things will be done or not. I'm hoping there still be, will, uh, there still will be compromise on this. And I don't think any elected official wants to see the physical cliff happen in its totality. For the most part, it affects them to a very great degree as well. It does. So they have a lot of reason not to exactly, allow these things to happen. Exactly. The, one thing will happen if all of it, if the physical cliff comes to pass, I, I definitely think we're going to go into recession again. I do too. Uh, it'll cut our GDP. Uh, economists generally agree that it's going to cut GDP by 2.5%. So we're going to go into recession again. Business is going to stop spending because you know they've got higher we didn't talk about payroll taxes the payroll tax now is going back up to 6.2 percent wow. from two so this is money out of pocket of small business and so on so uh, these things have a uh, this fiscal cliff it's has a, a big bearing effect. on on the economy going forward absolutely so people need to be aware of it uh, and everybody's voting today it's probably too late hopefully uh, people understand that they need to have somebody that's going to be proactive and compromise uh, in the government so that things like the physical cliff don't occur, at least in their totality. Someone who's uh, charismatic enough to get some people to work together. That's exactly. the problem we have right now. Yeah, I, I, I think day. you're exactly right. You know, and, and if you think about politicians in the past, uh, there are a lot of them that were able to work both sides of the aisle. Uh, and and I, I don't see that right now with the two elected or soon to be elected officials that were choosing right now. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to do it. Um, Got to pull people together at some point and we start do. working. Yeah, we sure do. Well, uh, speaking of working with someone, working mm -hmm. with a financial advisor, clearly sure. a great idea with all of this, uh, you know, all these variables and someone, like you said, to break them down for you so that you figure out how they affect, you know, so that someone else can figure out how they're going to affect you because right. doing this on your own would, in fact, yeah, uh, take a lot of time. your time. Yeah, it sure yeah. does. And it's, you know what, sometimes your time uh, as a person looking to find uh, an advisor, the time that that person spends doing that, they could make a lot more money and, and be able to have a greater investment from somebody like yourself. So, appreciate that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's, uh, it's terrific information. Thanks. And uh, as always, appreciate you bringing it to us and sharing with uh, the folks Glad to be here, Joe. All right. Well, there is much more coming up. Uh, one last time, the website? It's uh, RaymondJames.com slash Greg Cunningham. And it's 435-214-7112. All right. We'll be back with more of the Mountain Morning Show after these messages. Thanks, Joe. Oh, hey, hey, here he comes. Candidate, blue-eyed boy, United States, vote for him, the candidate.